And you're looking up at me saying, Ali, don't do it. I'm chopping trees. I've done something special. Now, I don't pay no attention to what they say about me. I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. But my main fight is for freedom and equality. And you really can't plan a fight when you're meeting a man you've never met before, right? I'm gonna dance and be pretty. I'm just gonna win on points. Maybe sometimes the wheel can outdo the skill. You are fighting the greatest fight of all times. This is the Ali show. <laughs> He's an American former professional boxer. He's widely considered among the greatest heavyweights in the history of the sport. He's one of the most recognized sports figures of the past hundred years. He's Muhammad Ali, and here are his top 10 rules for success. My, my thinking is so superior, and my knowledge is so positive, and my logic is so wise, until it clashes with the mentality which is down here and I'm up there. So by me being so high, I can see more and see farther than you. And you're looking up at me saying, Ali, don't do it. Don't do it. Ali, please stop me when it hurts. And you're on a job making 60, 70 pounds a week, or whoever this guy is. Never, never been out of the country, not known in his own neighborhood. Ali, don't do it. But I'm at such a high level. Until I don't think like you. I'm not like you. I know I say you are mean to another person. But you, I'm, but, you, I'm not but, but you know why they say that. I mean, it's for the because best possible reasons. So. They have fear and they are wary. It looks, looks dangerous to them. That's but right. But it's not really that dangerous to me. No problem. This will be the biggest upset since Sonny Liston. And I think it is befitting that I go out of boxing just like I came in, defeating a big, bad monster that nobody could destroy. A hard punch. I'm the underdog. If he hits me, I'm in trouble, like the Sonny Liston fight. But I came back and I shook the world and I got Liston. Now it's 10 years since Sonny Liston, I'm meeting another big, bad, strong monster knockout artist that beats everybody. Sonny Lister knocked out Patterson twice, and I was supposed to fall, but he didn't knock me out. He, because he could hit hard, but he couldn't find nothing to hit. George Foreman knocked out Ken Norton, knocked out Joe Frazier. True, I didn't knock him out, but I'm so fast, I'm so hard hit, I'm so scientific. I'm a total different man from Frazier Norton. Listen, David, when I meet this man, if you think the world was surprised when Nixon resigned, wait till I whip Fulman's behind. <laughs> I'm telling you, David, I'm down to 215 pounds. Right now, I said it went 215. I'm fighting weight already. I usually train six weeks for fight. I've trained four months for fight. I'm chopping trees. I've done something special. I've wrestled with an alligator. <laughs> I've tussled I with a whale. I believe you totally. I, I have, believe you completely. I have tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. Now, you know I'm bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock. Injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. <laughs> Man's in trouble. <laughs> Listen, George Fulman, people are afraid of George Fulman. They talk about how hard he hits. The world has been deceived. You listen to me now, I've never told you wrong. The man don't hit hard. He knocked Joe Frazier down six times, he got up six times. Joe King Roman is Tokyo Japan fight, the 
Puerto Rican champion, knocked him down three times, he jumped up three times. He knocked Ken Norton down four times, he jumped up four times. When have you ever saw the man say seven, eight, nine, ten, count his man out? When I hit Sonny Liston in the second fight, he stayed out for the count of ten. Zora Foley stayed out for the count of ten. Cleveland Williams stayed out for the count of ten. What few I have knocked out stayed down. Sugar Ray Robinson knocked him out for the count of 30. Joe Lewis, Marciana, Jack Dempsey, Jack Johnson, Archie Moore as a child, they knock him out cold. So this man has never knocked nobody out cold. He's a bully. He's slow. He has no skill, no footwork. He's awkward. And I have been given him a name. I named Floyd Patterson the rabbit. I named Sonny Liston the bear. And he shall be known officially as the mummy. <laughs> The mummy. But, and why, why? Why the mummy? Because he fights. When he's fighting, if you ever watch him in the ring, he 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 drags like that after his opponent. <laughs> <laughs> and and how's a mummy gonna catch me? When you're fighting a mummy, you just keep a step ahead of the mummy. Yeah, yeah. See? Yeah, move yeah move just move on the mummy. No, nope, mummy, I'm over here. No, mummy, I'm over here. Yeah, no, you're moving too fast. The mummy don't move that fast. <laughs> I don't pay no attention to what they say about me. All I do is just do what I have to do and get paid and that's it. But I don't really pay no attention to the rules of boxing. I don't pay no attention. I defy all the rules. I defy, I've added pages to the book of boxing. I have this game as such a thing now until boxing promoters can no longer afford my shows. I have governments like Iran ready to put up 10 million for me to fight Joe Frazier. I have governments like Cairo, Egypt wanting to put up 6 million for people like Ron Lau. I have countries all like, uh, all back throughout Zaire, talking to Mobuto, he wants him back again. They'll put up five more million for return with Fullman. When we talk about 10 million and six million and four million, this is unbelievable. And they don't expect to get the money back, they're promoting their countries and their ideals. So I've excelled so in this sport of boxing until Madison Square Garden is too small. Yankee Stadium is too small. The Houston Astrodome, the biggest promoters in the wealth is Americans and Englishmen you can get for promotions cannot just promote me no more. You understand? So I've not only added pages to boxing, but I added new sections to the boxing book. Everybody stop talking now, attention. I told you, all of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time when I beat Sonny Liston. I told you today, I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. Right. Then you might get me. But I didn't dance. I didn't dance for a reason. I wanted to make him lose all his power. I kept telling him he had no punch. He couldn't hit. He's swinging like a sissy. He's missing. Let me see your box. I hadn't started dancing yet. You can't say my legs are gone. You can't say I was tired because what happened? I didn't dance from the second round on. I stayed on the ropes. When I stay on the ropes, you think I'm doing bad. But I want all boxers to put this in the page of boxing. Staying on the ropes is 
is a beautiful thing with a heavyweight when you make him shoot his best shots and you know he's not hitting you. I would have gave George Holman two rounds of steady punching because after that he was mine. defenseless on the ropes. The referee may be deciding whether he's going to stop the fight. He is stopping the fight. I really care nothing about boxing. Boxing is a stepping stone just to introduce me to the audience. Like, 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 uh, like, if I was still in Louisville, Kentucky and never was a boxer, I might get killed next week in some type of freedom struggle and you never read the news. But now, if I'm even say the wrong thing and make news. So like boxing is just to introduce me to the struggle. Like when I speak, I draw people in the States to draw my people, to teach them various things, which will give them dignity, pride, and self-help, and go for self, or help the ghetto, and help the dope prostitution problem, the juveniles, and I use my image to help or do all I can to stop a lot of trouble among our own people fighting and killing each other. So boxing is just gonna be another year but my main fight is for freedom and equality, and this is what I plan to do in boxing. It's good for livelihood, but mainly uh, money don't really mean nothing because I proved that when I gave up the title, not knowing if I'm coming back or not for four years, and they let me back on my terms. I didn't deny nothing I believe. I'm still the same everything. So if even today, if my title hadn't been given back to me, if I got such in poverty where I had to go find a job, I would have did that. But I was, I made, a good living speaking in colleges because the war got unpopular and so many black militants were trying to do all they could and I was naturally right in the middle of all of it and represented it and that kept me alive. But if I couldn't fight, I would still not be fighting. So number one comes freedom first for my people, equality, and this is uh, what I plan to do after I'm through fighting, working with nothing but the people, the little people in the alleys, the wine heads, the downtrodden people, going out among them and helping them with, with my image. You know, I'm sure Henry will tell you, any fighter that knows what's happening, you really can't plan a fight when you're meeting a man you've never met before, right? You just have to get your tools ready. Here's a car stops on the highway. They call the AAA or whatever and say, my car's broke down. What it is, the lady, she don't know what's broke Well, the man comes with all the tools, and he come equipped to handle whatever the problem is. An astronaut goes into space, and he pretends that something happens to the ship before he take off. He gets out and he works on it. He's not looking for something to happen, but it might happen. So I didn't, I just had everything ready. Now, after the first round, being here with a top professional, a man so great, had so many knockouts, never been defeated, never been even scratched, I didn't know really how good he was. So I had to come in, actually a little nervous, and with everything ready. After one round of dancing, I found out that this would tire me out. So I would have to resort to ropes. I figured that out after the first round. So I said, I'm going to go to these ropes, and I'm going to let this man throw everything he can. Let him tire himself out. He might look like he's winning. And if he don't hurt me, I'm going to stay here. But if he should be as great as they say he is, if he hits as hard as they say he hit, when he hits you and breaks your arm, he knocked out Joe Frazier. I couldn't do it. Knocked out Ken Norton. He was a big, bad jab before the fight, you remember. Now, you remember that, don't you? Yeah, I do. How bad he was? <laughs> <laughs> they don't say that now. But you remember he was a real bad cat the other day, right? Don't forget that. Now, after I found out he didn't have it, I stayed there. But if he had had what I thought he had had or what they said he'd had, I'd have kept running, hoping I wouldn't get tired.
really silly when you think about fighting. I look at other fighters fighting, I say, I must be a fool. Here are two men, like two roosters. You ever know them cock fights? They take two roosters and they put them out and they put knives on them and the roosters are fighting each other and they're not even mad, don't know each other, and just to please somebody. And here are two men in the ring fighting each other and they're hitting each other and they're bleeding and they're fighting. What they mad about? They're not mad about nothing. And just, two, just a bunch of agitating, bloodthirsty people saying, you can whoop him, he can whoop him, my man can whoop your man. All right, y'all get in there and fight. Humans have more sense than that. And you sitting out there dressed up, drinking your beer and ah, 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 ah. And, and they just fighting. Just, ah, ah. And they just getting, and, and this is serious. The nose are bleeding, the eyes cut, the teeth is out, and the brain, they might have a concussion just to please you, human beings. It's real savage. And I said, I'm not going to be that kind of fight. I'm going to dance and be pretty. I'm just going to win on points. And if I hurt my man, I'm going to let him go. I'm not going to kill him just because somebody's watching. I did it to Floyd Patterson. I did it to George Chevallo. I did it to Carl Miltenberger. I did it to Henry Cooper when he started bleeding. I just pulled off of him deliberately. Blood just pumping and gushing. And he's got a family. He's got children. I, and, and I just can't. James Ellis. I can't see myself with a man on the ropes and just to prove how bad I am. And I see I got him. His eyes in his head. He's helpless. And I'm just deliberately hitting him. I don't do that. Whether it's a world champion boxer, a basketball player, a track star, a horse, even animals, hmm. I find out that this Mark Spitz, for an example, he's a world champion. But what made him the world champion was that he seemed to, at the right time when the pressure's down, at the last few yards, he can get that lead. Or he's got enough left to make hmm. it. I fought Ken Norton. My last fight, the fight was even up until the last round, but I had something that he didn't have, although I'm much older, uh, and that was the uh, last minute kick. What's that last minute kick? Is that something? Just the stamina, head? the strength, the, it's mental, more than training, though, the mental capacity, the mental to, capacity. To, to realize what's involved and how important it is and make your body do something that's really too tired to do, your mind makes you do it. Uh, Mark Spitz, this Olympic track star mm -hmm. was mentioning, he wasn't that much greater than all the people in the world, but sometime he won by just that much. Mm -hmm. And uh, a champion is just one who can come out at the last minute and close the show, as they say, the star closes the show. A 14, 15 round fight, and it's even, and the, usually this champion, you can depend on him to come through at the last few seconds and find some is energy from somewhere. Discipline? Is it discipline? Or Not only that, it's mental and physical. His body's in physical shape to do it, plus mentally too. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got himself in condition where both fellas may be, sometimes the wheel can outdo the skill. And sometimes a fella's wheel is stronger than the man who's actually better physically, and the determination and weakens the other man just to see him so determined. Pre-fight, your pre-fight pre uh, build-ups. Um, when you go to the weigh-in and you have, or they appear, mock-up battles with the other opponent. Are they really? How much is that is towards the uh, well, promotion really of the fight? Well, I'm not really wanting to fight there because I wouldn't be paid. But I really <laughs> do be angry. I have to psych myself up. I put myself on spots. I say. Is this for press, so for the build, for the build-up yes, for the well, fight? not really because the evening of the fight is when that happens and it's really sold out by then. But it actually puts fear in your opponent, like George Foreman. Just before the fight, I'm looking at him, and the man's giving his instructions. I said, sucker, you are in trouble tonight. 
You are fighting the greatest fight of all times. You heard I was the greatest. Like you just said, you heard this, now you see it. I said, you said I was the greatest, but you're going to see. I'm fast, sucker. I'm going to burn you up. You were fighting your idol. When you were a little kid, you were heard about me, you know. And he was. He wasn't even fighting. He didn't have his first fight in 1969. I'd been ex exiled two years after all I'd done. He just started fighting. So when I was fighting people like you in the 60s, he was just a little kid in junior high school. I said, you're meeting your master, your idol. He looked at me. And then I went back, first round. I laid in the corners, right? I said, come on, show me something. I talked through the whole fight. I don't know if you all know it. I talked through the whole fight. I said, come on, sucker. I said, show me something. They told me you could hit hard. You're just a sissy. Come on, sucker. Show me something. Come on, you can do better than that, George. You want to corner me? Here I am. You're waiting to corner me? And he just, mm, mm. and every once in a while, I just go, Phew. <laughs> See, the quickest way to a point is a straight line. To hit me, he had to do that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And while he's doing that, I said, I'm tagging him with jabs, right? Pop, pop. He's a fighter, you know. Whenever you meet a man coming at you like that, don't worry about it. Don't duck like it's so powerful. Just pop him. Pop. See? See, he's going. I done hit him before he got to you. <laughs> He, he's sticking one in. What else did you say to him, Alan? What else did you say to him? Oh, I grabbed his head sometimes, and I said, look at you. Look at you. Round seven, and you're tired. You have eight more rounds to go. Come on, keep punching. I want you to get tired. I said, uh-oh. I said, this is the wrong place to get tired. This is the wrong place to get tired. And he's just throwing them. I said, and then he got a couple of bruises. If you notice his face is kind of swollen. I said, look at you. You're the world heavyweight champion. You're the world. Pop, was hitting him. Pop, you're the world heavyweight champion. And look at me. You can't. Pop, I hit you. Just say, watch out. Here come another one. Pop. I said, look at that. Look at that. He threw it. And then I said, come on. Come on, get him. I'm going back to the rope now. I laid back. I said, okay, take a best shot. Take a best shot. Uh, <laughs> He's breathing. I said, oh, oh, you finished, boy. You are in trouble. I said, you don't have but two chances, slim and none. You in trouble. I talked to him through the whole fight. I was told that it's a big honor to be invited to speak at a place like Harvard. <laughs> I'm trying to be serious, but you want to make me laugh anyway. <laughs> I understand that uh, out of uh, people such as you all come presidents and governors and mayors and great doctors and physicians and scientists and everything. So I said, well, to get something together to talk to these people, it's got to be pretty heavy. <laughs> if you had told me I'd be offered a professorship to teach philosophy and poetry at Oxford and speaking at Harvard, man, I never would have believed it. So I'm real humble and I'm thankful to be here at such a high seat of learning, and I'm just a boxer when most boxers can't even talk. <laughs> you couldn't invite Joe Frazier, George Fulman. <laughs> this is the Ali Show. In the long and glorious history of Harvard University, no speaker ever received such a tumultuous standing ovation.
Thank you so much for watching. I made this video because Lex Vandenherrick asked me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know which of Muhammad Ali's top 10 rules meant the most to you. Leave it in the comments and I'll join in the discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Continue to believe and I'll see you soon. Do you ever get frightened before a fight? Do you ever get nervous before a fight? I'm nervous, but not frightened. I've been, I'm nervous uh, because I, I have a great insight on, I just don't see the audience. I, every camera, I see millions of people. Like the Frazier fight was watched by 1,000 million people, which is five times the population of everybody in the United States. Just a picture of arena with one million people. I imagine you couldn't see them all. And just think about 100 million and 1,000 million and all those people and everything, that makes me nervous. Just the idea of me just being a humble fellow from Kentucky, got lucky in sports, and now here's the house, the fight was piped in, the place like Thailand to the government house, and Arabia and the government officials took time off to watch the fight, and just for two men boxing, attracting so many people of all races and nationalities, in Hawaii, I understand, they, they stopped, closed all the factories, and the people, they set televisions on every street corner. People came out watching them fight on the streets, and every bar in America, every, every house, even traffic was still doing that fight. In Madison Square Garden, 10,000 people couldn't get in, and just over one man, and just imagine all them people watching you, that makes me nervous until, until I get started. And then no nerves at all? No. How about this villain role? You're getting to be the villain, and Liston is getting to be yeah, the good guy. Yeah, Liston was the villain, and didn't nobody like Liston. Liston was a thug, Liston was a gangster, Liston was this, Liston was that. Everybody wants to see Liston beat, and now all of a sudden, Liston is the savior. You know, uh, I guess... That's the way I like it. That makes me rumble. <laughs> Don't we rumble? Float like, like a butterfly and sting like a beast. Ah, rumble, young man, rumble. Hey! That's going to be going to do. That's we're going to rumble. Well, I have a poem. Huh. We got one minute. <laughs> one minute. The poem goes no. like this. People say, what's going to happen? You meet Joe Frazier again. Here's how the fight's going to sound on the radio for those of you who can't afford to buy the expensive theater seats. <laughs> and the fight goes like this. Ding, Ali comes out to meet Frazier, but Frazier starts to retreat. If Frazier goes back an inch farther, he'll wind up in the ringside seat. Ali swings to the left. Ali swings to the right. Look at the kid carry the fight. Frazier keeps backing, but there's not enough room. It's a matter of time. There Ali lowers the boom. Now Ali lands to the right. What a beautiful swing. And the punch lifts Frazier clean out of the ring. <laughs> Frazier's still rising, but the referee wears a frown. Or he can't start counting till Frazier comes down. <laughs> now Frazier disappears from view. The crowd is getting frantic. But our radar station stuff picked him up. He's somewhere over the Atlantic. <laughs> Who would have thought when they came to the fight that they would have witnessed the launching of a colored satellite? <laughs>